Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Adubato. We kick off the show talking about important environmental issues, and we kick it off with uh, Sean Ananko, who is Director of Agriculture and Education at an organization called Grow It Green Morristown. You'll see their website throughout the show. Sean, how are you doing? I'm doing great today, Steve. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you. Tell us exactly what Grow It Green is. Uh, we're a small no nonprofit located in Marstown, New Jersey. Uh, we run an urban farm um, behind the Lafayette Learning Center, which is a one acre education farm focused on teaching kids about where their food comes from. And we also host a, a community garden over on Early Street. How'd you get into this? Um, <clears throat> I got into this by luckily getting into beekeeping. Um, a number of years ago, a, a family friend offered me a beehive and I got really interested in honeybees and how beekeeping works. And that set me on a path to learn about agriculture and put me into being a farmer. Good stuff. Now, beekeeping will be another segment, but on this one, <clears throat> I'm curious about this 50 foot greenhouse tunnel. I, I'm, I'm reading about it. And I'm saying it does what? Explain what this is, because also our friends at the PS. EG Foundation told us about you because you're part of their neighborhood partners program. Tell us what that is, that tunnel. Yeah, so it is an unheated um, high tunnel um, and is also movable on our farm. Uh, so they call them caterpillar tunnels out in the agriculture field. And what it does is allows us to grow four seasons throughout the year and also increase production through the shoulder seasons of the spring and the fall. So what's really interesting about this tunnel is that we're going to move all of our tomato production into this tunnel where we're going to grow them on vertical trellises to increase our yields by like 15, 20 percent. And at the same time, uh, like teaching people about how uh, vertical growing and how agriculture is starting to change for smaller scales. Sean, help me on this. How does it actually impact um, the issues of food insecurity and um, you know, I don't know, Marstown, there are food deserts all across this state and across this nation. We're taping in New Jersey. But what does this have to do with people being able to get fresh, healthy fruit and vegetables? Yeah, so um, in the winter time, we find that, um, especially here in this area, uh, fresh produce, especially like greens, lettuce, and kale, aren't as easily available on a local scale. So having tunnels right. like these, uh, we're able to uh, provide that produce throughout the winter and spring and fall. So what I'm curious about is, okay, so it's, you got the tunnel. Now we're taping this program in February in 2022. It's freezing as we're doing this program. Again, as this program is repeated, it'll get warmer and et cetera. So are you saying that the New Jersey climate and the temperatures here and what it's like here is not as relevant when you have such technology? That's correct, yeah. Um... What it allows us to do is start crops earlier in the season and push them later into the winter um, so that we're having a continuous harvest throughout the, the growing year. So connect farming to climate change. So with, um, with what we have going on here in climate change, and farmers have to be uh, resourceful with what weather patterns we're not able to predict anymore. We can't just say like, oh, it's gonna, the saying April showers bring May flowers. We may, may not get any rain in April, but all of the rain in May. That's right. Uh, so these protected, these high tunnels allow us to kind of control the climate uh, so that we're getting the, pro the product and produce that we're hoping to put out to, into the community. Before I let you go, give me 30 seconds on educating students all about agriculture and through uh, Grow It Green Marstown. Yeah, I mean, I've been with Grow It Green for the past 11 years and educating these students from pre-K all the way through 12th grade um, has really inspired me as a farmer and it's inspired a community in Marstown to uh, start taking agriculture and environmental science seriously. And you also have an apprentice program. Yes, and we have an apprentice program where we're gonna start um, it was a piloted last year, and we're hoping to, over the years, uh, build that into where we can uh, send young adults out into a trajectory of agriculture. It's important work. Sean, thank, thank you for joining us. And we've had the website for Grow Green New Jersey up for people to find out more about your organization. Sean, all the best to you and the team at uh, Grow It Green Morristown. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. You got it. We'll be right back after this.
One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by PSENG, the Northward Center, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, Atlantic Health System, Investors Bank, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, the Fidelco Group, Delta Dental of New Jersey, and by the Russell Berry Foundation. Promotional support provided by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, part of the USA Today Network. And by CIANJ and Commerce Magazine. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis when I was two. It's hard to grow up with CF. But I have an awesome care team at Goryeb Children's Hospital, helping me do the things I want to do, like play lacrosse. And now I've been recruited to play in college. Where you go for pediatric care matters. Atlantic Health System, because every moment is a moment that matters.